Welcome back to The Big Issue uh, on City 972 and also on City TV. Uh, this morning, discussing the first of three issues. The first has to do with the Black Stars and the performance of the AFCON and the Ministry of Youth and Sports' intervention. There was a meeting yesterday, which we can assume has led to the sacking of the national team head coach. That was a story that uh, emerged just about an hour or so ago. Milovan Raivach is no more. Uh, we expect the entire technical team to go with him. Uh, from the ministry's press statement, we'll perhaps also expect uh, a reshuffle at the Black Stars Management Committee level. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So far, nothing has come out on that, but the, one of the requests of the Ministry of Youth and Sports was a reconstitution of that. And uh, I've tried to look at what problem the sacking of Milovan Raivach solved in the immediate term. But now we can look at the bigger picture of how, how do we get Ghana to be competitive again? Is it simply a matter of still throwing money at the team and expecting that we do well at tournaments? Uh, and I think Franklin has asked the most important question of the day. Why do we carry that sense of entitlement to tournaments that Ghana must beat everybody? Have we done the kind of work that leads us to have those kind of dreams? Uh, Chris and uh, Jerome will have a bite at that. But I've also brought in uh, somebody who deals a lot with football at the grassroots level. On the line, I'll talk to him for about five minutes and then I'll come in to Jerome and Chris. Uh, Adam Ansa uh, is the CEO of Soccer Time. Uh, he does uh, social projects as well as uh, a lot of business with foot, uh, young boys in the Volta region and then in the Greater Accra region as well. Adam, good morning. Hi, good morning, Godfrey. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. And I'm sure you've heard the first part of the conversation where we've dealt about the sacking of Milo. But from where you come from, you deal with the game at the developmental level. And there are those who have said, for Ghana to do well at tournaments, which is where the interest seems to be, tournaments, tournaments, qualify for AFCON, qualify for World Cup. But the work is not being done at the level that you operate at, development level. How do we fix that? Okay. Good morning again, uh, Godfrey. Good morning to your, to your listeners and uh, the fellow panelists. Um, thanks again for this opportunity. Um, let me digress a bit by saying that we, we have to broaden the discussion a bit, okay, to look at the policy side of things, okay. Um, fair enough, the sports ministry has issued a directive this morning, okay, but what is the broad-based policy as far as football development? of the government or of our government okay this is a country that is noted globally okay for its prowess in football we've achieved a lot with youth football to market the country okay football creates jobs it's an essential tool in the fight against poverty okay as government and i'm not saying i'm not talking about this government as government what has been our policy to develop football over the years. Look, what is happening is indicative of what is generally happening in our sports. It used to be the case that the Golden Rockets, okay, they would play and be almost on the brink of qualification to uh, Davis Cup Zone 1. Tim Henman and Greg, 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 Greg Ruzewski, they were here somewhere around 95, 97. I, I recall, uh, at the Crossbow Stadium. Yeah. Okay, Ghana was all over in the UK. You understand? Because we were playing Greg Rusty and St. Freeman right here in Accra. What has happened to our golden racket? We used to have the mobile games. We used to have um, um, Emmanuel Tufo, Solomon Lamegata, Timothy Hesey, Nate Boating. Just name them. There was this policeman, um, Kennedy Osei. He would always be in the final of any major athletic competition. What is happening to us today? So, we have to look at things from the policy point of view and to note that we cannot just wait and then every four years make budgets available 
for national teams and expect that you know we would we would gain something you know or we would bring back the glory the, the, the glory days. Let me give you an example. School sports, okay, used to be the platform for the development of all the players. Mm. Montari came from somewhere who cares, ACN from Ogasco. There was James Nano and Oleno were from Loteco, Elongua. And you would see oh, really? this place, yes. You would see this place, Sani Wahab in Maoli School, okay. I mean, just to compete, and you could see that this is a talent that will end up on the national level. What do we have now? The school calendar has no space for any sporting activity. You understand? Now, inter-districts, inter sports, competitions, even national games, nobody pays attention. The sports development unit of GES, what was the last time you heard about them? You understand? Now, we are building, uh, what's it called? I still church here and there, thanks to GMTC support and all that. Good enough. But what is the policy direction? Are we just awarding contracts or we are ensure or, or, or we are ensuring that we are putting them in areas where you know they can be utilized? I mean, Techiman has been a hub of the development of our football talent. Most of the young kids we bring come from Techiman. I'm shocked Techiman doesn't have an actual test. You understand? So you have to look at it from the policy point of view, and finally, okay, you have to look at the quality of people we send to the sports units or, or sports ministries. I mean, you mean the, you at the at the ministry level? Even at the ministerial level, mm. I mean, I have to be very frank with you. You understand? We had Mustafa, um, you see, Honorable Mustafa, you see. You have um, Akwasi Lagantu at the point in time. Um, I mean, you, you, you can name them. Mahama Ayariga. Mahama, Mahama Ayariga, yes. He, I think mean, Nila might be the only exception. Yeah, I mean, well, we'll come there. Um, Mahama, he, he said, well, they asked me to get a football club and I got one. What is the, their understanding of youth football? Our structures, the difficulties, you know, that, that our kids play in. Look, just go around. The, the division two league starts on the 28th. You understand? And you can see, I mean, the RFAs are trying to do their best. I mean, with, with the little resources they have, they can do with more. But, you know, you go and you look at some of the fields that we expect players to play on, and you, you, they are like potato farms. You, 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 you understand? And so we have to look at it from a broader perspective to understand why F&B spends so much money in South Africa in the development of youth football. And when you come to Ghana, you don't hear them, you don't associate them with sports. Why ENI Energy has a program in Italy targeted at identifying African kids who are children of parents that have come to Italy through illegal migration and are giving them the opportunity to develop their talent. And right here in Accra, they have an office here and, 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 and they are not doing anything in football. So if you look at all the factors together, then you will understand why our sports is thinking at a very fast, even in boxing, in United boxing. I mean, we used to have them. You would hear of um, uh, Kofi Kwe, I mean, uh, African international middleweight champion. You would hear of uh, uh, what's called Douglas Odani. I mean, but we, we don't have them anymore. So as a, as a fourth in sports, okay, we are going down at a very, very alarming rate, okay? And every president or officials of various units, when they come, they, whatever they pursue, we have to face it, the broader sports developmental agenda of the government. You understand me? Hmm. You know, you know, Kat came up with some very laudable um, you know, policies. Catch them young, um, you know, empowerment, create, but it has to fit into the broader governmental football development agenda. Where is that one? You understand? So if I'm reading today that the sports ministry has issued a directive, is, are, are we, do we want to appease Ghanaians? Yes, there are problems. I, and I agree largely with most of the points that have been raised. But the countries that are, are achieving something have been intentional. Equatorial Guinea have 
certain of listen let's go back all these guys we have who are of of of, of, of I mean, who who were born in in uh, what's it called Spain and other areas let's pull them to, together you we talk about the Gambian defense being being very organized look at Omar Kohli okay this is a guy who came from the youth development system got to Finland made it to Sweden and is literally now today he's back so Godfrey we have to look at a whole lot of factors okay and we, we have to sit down and tell ourselves that when we won the first African Cup three countries participated the second one four maybe the last one in 82 eight countries participated we are simply no longer a force in sports and we have to we, we have to wake up and institute policy interventions to arrest the situation thank you very much Adam Ansa, ceo of soccer time agency jerome yeah. do you agree policy yes. because that is the next phase of the conversation we are having i, I, I don't want to tell show you up this. at tournaments or build <clears throat> the game properly yeah i don't want to tell viewers what you told me about the former minister when it comes to policy. <laughs> you, know okay. what, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but see, everything that uh, Adam. we've heard, mm. Adam, uh, Neil Ante. Honorable Neil Ante, and um, Franklin. Franklin, everything they've said points to the direction that so many, thing, so many things are wrong with our game. Mm -hmm. And maybe I should start with uh, Franklin's observation. See, I think it is just about how we communicate to our publics when it comes to these competitions. Yeah. And I'll give you just one example. Just when we were told about the $25 million thing mm -hmm. for AFCON and uh, World, Cup. World Cup, I heard very clearly that the team had been tasked to go and win the AFCON. And World Cup semifinal. And World Cup semifinal. And Godfrey, the three of us here, and honorables. I mean, uh, everyone know, except you don't know what is happening. happening right now. You would understand that it is not possible for Ghana to be in the last four of the World Cup. But it was everywhere. And I'm sorry to say this. Here were the FA boss and other people there clapping to this. As if to say, we can just do it by beating our chest. We come back home, reality dawns that, look, this is not possible. But our fans out there have taken this, and they're on the street. Oh, Ghana will win the AFCON. In fact, this, this Cameroon competition, mm. I saw stories quoting the FA boss saying yeah. that yeah. we will win the competition. Yeah. I'm saying that, and that is to answer Franklin's uh, uh, observation, that something has got to change with how we even communicate to football fans. The expectations. The expectation. It has to be managed. If we had been told that, given the problems we have had, we are now trying to build a foundation. Yeah, Thank 17 you. Deputy. I mean, yes, we are, we are putting the blocks together to mm -hmm. see where we can raise the team to. I'm not sure fans will come insulting and attacking people for not winning the competition because we can't do it. If we've not done it in 40 years, what is the guarantee that it can be done just under any circumstance. So for me, it's just about how we communicate expectations mm. and we need to deal with that issue. Now, one point Honorable Nilante raised, which I was so happy with, and I've held this position since 2014, management. Sometimes I, I don't even want to talk about the players because the players are like clay. Mm. How you mold them and put them in the sun, you come back and meet them like that. But management decisions, Godfrey, if we are to go back to 2014, what happened in Brazil for me was leadership failing us and not about the players at all. So something has got to change with how we manage the black stars, the decisions we take. We were on one of your spaces, and I, I, I know you remember this very well. I told you about Kudus. Yes. Some of our friends didn't understand why we even want to go back to the issue all the time. But for me, the Kudus issue, for example, was a leadership failure. Because those of us here know very well that when players get injured, it is nothing, nothing to hide, nothing yeah. to conceal. It is nothing extraordinary. It's a natural consequence. It's we are human beings. It's part of the game. It happens all the time. 
what I was expecting, for instance, managers of the team, and when I mention managers of the team, I'm talking about the coach, the FA, and the Black Stars Management Committee. What I expected them to do re relative to the Kudu situation, for example, was the guy is not fit. On the basis of his unfitness, look at how soon or how quick he can recover. Okay, so per what the information we have from the medics, his recovery is say 60 or 70 percent. On the basis of that, we are including him in the team. At this stage, he will be able to play. Or maybe his recovery is 30, 40 percent. On the basis of that, we can't take him today to the, to, to the competition. So that you make that clear decision. Fans will not midway into the competition hope asking that questions. Kudus is coming. And you go to presses and journalists will ask you when is Kudus coming and you give an either or situation. You don't manage a senior national team like that. Even our football clubs, we don't manage them like that. So I'm saying that a lot of these problems we have had is also to do with how management take decisions. They, they know very well the right things to do because, I mean, a lot of these things, we see them on TV all the time. Mm. How many times haven't we had Manchester United, Man City, Liverpool and those things deal with some of these things in a very simple way? But it comes back on our laps and for us it's like some rocket science that we have to bring people down to, to, to brainstorm and find solutions to them. We, we, we have got to take a serious look at even the people we appoint to take hold of certain things when it comes to this thing. And I side with you. I think in your introduction, you talked about the management committee. Mm. When you were mentioning the names, I'm sorry, but I forgot that Sami Kufo was part. And I was, the moment yeah, I heard the bad. name, I felt bad. <laughs> because, you know, given his experience in the game. Some of the things we saw should not happen. If I were him, I would even decline the appointment. Because... The Black Stars Management Committee in the first place doesn't have to be there. What is it that the Black Stars Management Committee does so much that if they are not there, it cannot be done? Yesterday I was asking someone that I, I, I maybe you I want don't to know. know. I want to know what they do. They should tell us. So I that can. we can look at it and say, okay, because of your relevance, these things that you do, when you are not there, it can't be done. So you'll be there. Otherwise, go for it. Alex Asante. What's his role in the Black Stars? He does almost from, like that. Thank you. From what I have known of him, he is like he does. a cog, a key part of everything Black Stars when it comes to logistics, their movements, their travel, everything. What is it that that, that committee does that we can't get two, three people as part of the... Two, three is a lot. Just one. Because like I said, as a function, most of these decisions... So I'll give you a special example. At the moment, I think... Um, Patrick Imboma is yeah. team yeah. manager of the Cameroon yeah. National Team, if I'm not mistaken. At the last World Cup, it was somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, at the last AFCON, sorry, when they won it as well, yeah, one of their former players mm -hmm. makes all the decisions regarding where the team will sleep, who is coming. Mm -hmm. He's the one who flies to go and check on players when they are injured. Mm -hmm. The most successful version that we have seen for some time was um, Oliver Bierhoff yeah, 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 yeah. for the German, German national, team. national Team. Basically, no. No decision about where Germany's national team goes is, is made without Bierhoff signing off on it. He is the team manager, so-called. So he is the management committee. Yeah. Reports to the FA. Just one person one doing person. that. And that's what I'm saying. It's, In our case, the, the committee is useless. We have to let the FA understand. When I read the ministry statement... And it's a said, national team's coordinator as well. Yes. Yeah, I mean, too many things <laughs> all coming together and we still don't have... I mean, success. I'm saying that when I, I, I read the ministry statement mm. and they were saying the, the committee should be... I said, oh, ministry, mm. you should have just said this is Don't ban it. Don't do it again. But I don't know where the problem also lies, where at the point that they make so, about the policy. The, the people at the ministry under, even understanding they so don't understand what the problem. the problem is. So coming to that, the ministry ought to be told. And I started saying this on Monday, that I don't think the, 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 the Ministry of Youth and Sports they have protected the interest of the state too well. And you mentioned it. Aside the issue of policy, which is critical, because if you don't have any plan on the table mm -hmm. as to what you want to do, within what time, and how what you setting want to targets? achieve, how are you even going to set targets? Yes. So it is up to the ministry to make demands, certain demands. If they don't know, they should consult. 
There are people in the business who can tell them what others are doing, which is giving them results. And we should be very patient because mm -hmm. where we are now, we can't get to the last four of the World Cup like we are, mm -hmm. we are, we are, we are setting it. Yeah, which brings me to an interesting quote from former Black Stars midfielder Ajiman Bedu. I, I, I and read that. I think he's, he summarized everything you said. He says, that. the Black Stars, it says, the team is collapsed. Let us go for a development plan. If we qualify to the World Cup, fine. But if we don't, we shouldn't be worried. Let us build from scratch and stop comparing past teams to the current one. If we keep relying on the old team, then we have a long way to go. You see, he's spot on. And just to, just to end, the ministry representing government must take the interest of Ghanaians and, and protect it. It comes to the agency point I think Honorable was mm. also raising. Look, it's a subject no one wants to talk about. I was very young then when I think the, the new Ghana Football Association structure was set up, where, for instance, they said that uh, if you don't own a constituency in the football space, you, you can't can be, be part, part of it. it. I think that is where our problems started from. Mm. I was very young then. I didn't understand what they were talking about. What they were talking about. But today, I can tell you that it is a potential eternal issue of conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. And that's what Honorable was talking about. I'm a Kotoko fan. Everybody knows how I support Kotoko. If I'm to get into any of those spaces, are you telling me that I can honestly look at my Kotoko affinity and say that I would, I mean, make sure Kotoko players don't get there? I won't do that because I'm human. So that has to be looked at. We, we, we need to make it clear to the FA people that we cannot go on the way we are going on. There are some things I don't want to say on this platform mm. because, I mean, until recently, when collapse are, make, uh, are made, mean. look at the under 17, 2023, and check the, where the well, players are coming them. from. He said them. General, no, 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 I, no, I'm saying I that to say these things. See, see, because when Keto see. Greco alone has five things, no, what I'm when saying you go is, to the under 15, about 16 of the boys there belongs to him alone. <laughs> when you go to under 17, the you same see? number. Under 20, the same number. Black Stars, the same number. You see, is coach, he the only person doing coach, football? The point I'm making is, General, quickly until, wrap up. until recently, mm -hmm. when call-ups are made and you put the squad down, you check three, two, uh, I mean two of our teams. You let me take the 20 and the 17. And, the 17. and check the clubs they are coming from. And you yes. ask yourself, why is it that all of a sudden, 13 years, Jan Techi ruled Ghana football? We didn't see this. We didn't see such things. And all of a sudden, you see clubs. There was one that there was a Vision FC mm. goalkeeper. I said to myself, wow. Yeah. All of a sudden, you can have Stay players coming from. God and we are, not saying that, and that. we are not saying that don't bring these players. What we are saying is, if it is as a result of your proximity to power in our football, then it is wrong. It is wrong. Because once I also come... And I have the that influence. Replicate. I'm also going to use it. And where would the interest of the state be? That is why the sports ministry must, must take these issues very seriously. Because we're, Godfrey, at the end of the day, if we are not able to, to cut that part where people will promote their interest, what will happen is when they get to the national teams and we qualify for, say, the World Cup, it is going to be their players on the world stage the ministry is funding these players and whatever they are going to do there. At the end of the day, if these players get contracts abroad, they put the where does the money go? The money goes it goes to, to private pockets. Nothing will come to the country. Meanwhile, it is the government that may have funded seven players, three players, two players from these guys managing the team. And the end result is that they are going to benefit. Eventually, we may not win anything. But because their players will be picked by top clubs elsewhere, they become winners. Chris, Look, you have five minutes. <clears throat> wow. Mm. <laughs> to be honest Excuse with you, <laughs> when it comes to development, you know where I stand on that. Yes. I was, I'm so happy Honorable Neil Ante Van der Poel is on the show. When we came back from Brazil, mm. Godfrey, the then government, of which Honorable was part of, set up a commission of inquiry. He mentioned the late Ben Kofi's name. He was the chairman of a technical committee set up by the commission. 
that this technical committee, we are giving you the tax of giving Ghana a brand of football and coming out with proper developmental strategy that as a country we are supposed to build upon and make sure our football and our sports in general gets to the next level. It was made of on uh, the late Ben Kofi, the late coach Samadi, Masawu Didi Dramani, um, Otia Kentin, then the technical director of the FA, my good friend Kochopele, but because of the, at the time he was very busy, mm -hmm. so he couldn't be part. The current um, Professor Minta, mm -hmm. director of education of GFA. That's it. I was the secretary to that committee. Godfrey. Ben Kofi at the time was more than 79 years. This man, with all his brains, we will sit from like 1 p.m. and at times from, a, from his own pocket, he will feed us and we close at 11, 30, 12 midnight. There was a time we closed at 12 midnight and he asked me, coach, do you have a car? I said, no, I don't have a car. So how would you get home? I said, I'll, I'll try and get myself. And he said, no, I'll drive you home. I said, no, you can't do that. At your age, you should drive home and then rest. He said, no, I'll take you home. True to the man's words, he took me home. And when, he, when I got home, I told him that, Daddy, please, I will not sleep until you call me that you have reached home. home. And he was staying somewhere. In Dansuman. In Dansuman. Mm -hmm. I'm at Ashiye on the Dodua stretch. Look at the distance. He took me from the Ghana Football Association headquarters all the way to Ashiye. And then he drove by and he called me. Look, we presented a technical report to the commission. In that commission's final recommendation, that report is there. And one of the things we said, which I'm going to repeat here, is that Going forward as a country, we should look at establishing proper academies owned by the state yeah. across the country in every region in this country. Get the human resource of Ghanaian technocrat and put them there. And I remember when I was presenting the thing on behalf of the technical team to Justice Jamefe. I think that's the name. Yes, right? yes, yeah, yes. Justice Jamefe. I told him that I'll use myself as an example. I'm an educationist. Apart from my science background of doing chemistry to the very highest level and then teaching, I also have my coaching budget. So imagine opening an academy having someone like me there. I'm not going to only coach football, but I'm going to ensure that when it comes to education, these boys will benefit. And you can do this thing and liaise with the Ministry of Education whilst we are coaching or we are taking them through proper development, their education is also not compromised. That, in my view, is the beginning of whatever we are supposed to do going forward. And the beauty of it is, look, we costed the project at that time. I was given the tax to look at what has been done in Spain, look at what has been done in Germany, look at what has been done in France, and together with Masawu Didi Dramani, develop a model that will suit the Ghanaian player in terms of our system and our brand of football. Honorable Neil Ante Van der Poel, I know personally, is a football person. He's a sports player. He played the game. So when he speaks, you can see the know-how in what he says, the substance in his submission. But I sit here today, Ben Kofin is gone, the late coach Sam Ade is gone, Otia Kintin is still around, Masawood is still around, Professor Minta is And Professor Minta is very close to the Ghana Football Association. He works hand in hand with the current technical director. I sit back at times and I'm so sad that you were part of such solid work done by proper technocrats. You cannot tell Bernard Lepertre that there is a document there that we need to what? Expand upon. Bring in the Ministry of Youth and Sport. 
bring the earthly people, sit them down, and put that document before them and say, look, as a country, this is we even went on to say that, let tax every assembly in this country to put 0.5% or any, any form of percentage of the money they make in establishing this football or these sports centers in every region. And let's see where Ghana will be in the next 10 years. So when Ajima Bidu speaks like the way he's spoken, it is clear that like this is somebody who understands how these things are supposed to be done. Look, we will sack coaches, we will bring in new ones. Apart from the physical problem that is immediate, that we should address, like Jerome has said, make sure you dissolve that management committee. It should never be exist. made. It should not exist. exist at all. It shouldn't be there. When it comes to selection of our players into the team, get a proper technical scout. Technical team made of proper scout. I am of the view that if you go elsewhere, it's not only if you go to Italy, England, it's not only about Southgate or Roberto Mancini bringing our players there. There's a scouting team that are scouting everybody. And when Roberto Mancini brings out his team, the technical men are all sitting there. Nobody's going to impose on me. But if you mention Jerome, Dr. he would justify why it should be Jerome and not Dr. Kotobuwa. That is the way we should be looking at And not have our coach never again defend his team before management members who know nothing, I repeat, I won't take that back, who know absolutely nothing when it comes to matters of technicality and tactics. If it was Samuel Kufo sitting there? Oh, no more. If he's sitting there, the sort of things that are happening. If he's of the, it should, it should not be happening. The sort of thing that is happening, he, look, he's there, but look at what is happening. This is somebody who, when he was playing, could challenge the management committee. The management committee. But look at look at the, how he's compromised himself. See, everything that the management committee does, Sami Kufu alone can do. Can it. do it. He, he knows alone. that for a fact. Because he has everything that a, a footballer should know and and, 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 and and make sure it is done and it is implemented. So he's compromised his stance. So all of them go. We shouldn't look. How I wish I was the one making the decision. Go Fred, you know me. Okay. <laughs> but you're not the one I making fire, the I will just <laughs> you're not the one making the decision. That is what you see <laughs> when our money is being put into something, please. We need to get something back. The best out of it. Hold on. For me. I don't really like Vanapa. I'll give you final words on this. You have the last ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, Don't Fred, I'm I'm so happy Coach Nimle has mentioned this particular issue. You see. That is why I say sometimes politics is also at the base of our problems in this country. When we left office, in fact, it's just unfortunate that we didn't win the elections in 2016. That document was going to be my Bible as far as football management and football development in the country was concerned. Because just as we had the Benkofi 10-year development plan, that document was so rich. I look at it, I read it. But I spent days reading that document. And in fact, he mentioned names as just drawn tears to my eyes because of the passing of Ben Kofi and Coach Ade. These are my fathers when it comes to the issue of football. I sit with them, we talk football morning to eve. And Ben Kofi also coached me when I was in the university team. So I have that relationship with him. I call him Papa. And I was always in his house in Dansuma. So, so we discussed the issues. We discussed the issues. And when I became Minister for Youth and Sports, there was no time that I would not call him and ask of his ideas or I bounce issues off him. Look, we, we, we know that, we know that as, we, as we are discussing today, mm -hmm. all of us know the problem. We have the answers. But the issue is that who is going to call me, call you, call Jerome, call Namely, for us to sit down at the common table, irrespective of political affiliations, and discuss these problems that we have and be able to look at it and say that, look, this is a national problem. And all of us will have to look at it nationalistically and take decisions. So it becomes a document a blueprint, a charter 
that irrespective of which political party is in power, will work with it and becomes like we have in the, the economic development plan of the, of the country. The 40 year or 25 year development plan that was developed by the National Development Planning Commission. We must have such a plan for Ghana football. Not only Ghana football, for Ghana sports. Look, what we are talking about in football is happening in athletics, it's happening in boxing. Today, boxing, there's a serious problem between the new administration of Ghana boxing and some of the promoters because the president of the Ghana Boxing Association will not agree. In order for, for uh, uh, our promising boxers to be giving some useless opponents in order to build their records. He is insisting they have a term they call Achi Agbeshi. Go for it. <laughs> if I'm a very good boxer and, and they want to build my records, they will bring somebody like you. One, two rounds, yeah, any small blow hits you, you fall, and my, my, my record becomes rich in order to be attractive to the other association affiliated bodies and get fights. Because those who are managing those boxes are only interested in the money they will make and not the real development of our boxes. So you see today, our boxes go out there and then they embarrass us. Because they are not getting good opponents locally. Azuma Nelson became Azuma Nelson because right from day one, he was giving the likes of Billy Kwame to fight with. Where at that time, Billy Kwame's father, Freeman Kwame, thought that his son was the best featherweight in the, in the country. They fought. You understand? All these boxers, I quote it, Joshua quote it, Joshua was giving very strong opponents to fight with. So I'm saying that we have a chronic problem in sports. And until all of us sit down and recognize the fact that, look, these are the problems we have. Let's resolve it. I was so happy with Adam and Sen's presentation. Look, if you get up, and Godfrey, you and I have talked about this issue several times. And you just use money to go and build an astroturf. That mm -hmm. really cannot let us have 11 players on the field to play. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of money. So what we have built are for leisure and not for football development. You understand me? That pack we have put, the money we spent to put that pack at Sukura. Could you have used that to develop the Liberty Park in Danzuma, which will be used by Liberty, Great Olympics, House of Folk, and the rest of the players, all, all the teams? You understand me? Why should we use money to go and put AstroTurf in Yinahili? When Kumasi Sports Stadium is suffering? You understand? When New Edubiase is suffering? So all these are issues that we have to look at critically and say, look, what do we do with our sports development? Let me come back to the issue that we are discussing, especially the issue of sacking of coaches and all this. And Nimli said it well. We can sack Milo tomorrow or today. The person will break. If these issues are not addressed, we'll go through the same problem. He mentioned Didi Dramani. What didn't what did he, did, uh, did he suffer when he was with the national team, the under 20, and also when he went to the women's team? You understand? Then we end up destroying our people, thinking that our people are not good enough. But because the structure, the fundamentals are so wrong that the man did not get the sort of environment to be able to do his work. Look, before the appointment of Milo, I said, look, bringing Milo, well, I don't have a problem with him, but then it will resolve our problem. Let, this man has been knocking on our doors, and I've personally engaged with him before. Uh, nothing. The former Tottenham, Newcastle. Uh, Chris, Chris Hutton. Chris Hutton. Chris Hutton. Chris Hutton. Look, he is of Ghanaian descent. And I discussed with him the development of Ghana football. And because he has been in the UK, he has been in the Premier League. Because the Premier League, you don't just handle the, 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 the first team. All. There are things you do. You take care of the development of the and, and the lower teams. And you every day monitor the work of the coaches and the managers who are handling the lower teams. So that if they recommend or at any point in time, like now that you are having problems, some teams are having problems raising 18 players to sit on the bench. Any player that will be recommended to you 
by the under 23 or under 19 coach, you will sell, you yourself know that that player is worth taking a position. Like Manchester United, Elenga is playing today. You think if uh, Raf have not seen Elanga or has not monitored Elanga or has Elanga not been uh, recommended to him by the under 20 coach, he will have chosen Elanga. No. That is what we need to do. I'm not just only coming to handle the team to play qualifying series. When we finish with qualifying series, I can go and enjoy my life enjoy her holidays, enjoy the bright sun of Ghana, and the next qualifying series, we call players again, two weeks to the match, and then we play, and that's all. Do, these are the things we have been doing all along, and it is wrong. We must have a plan, a system, where we have a standby team that at any point in time when, God for your, 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 your form dips, you are out. Nilante comes in. If Nilante forms deep, Animle is in. Uh, Jerome is in. Somebody... That is what the national teams are. That, when was the last time you saw the German national team hmm, being wholly changed like that? Between two, two years, you and I, we have used 161 players for a national team. Which country prepares a team like that? Eh? That's, a, that, it's my figure that's a really high number. 161 in two years. Yes. 161 different players in two years. How can you have a That's team? No good. How can you have a team? So we should, we should sit down and, and know what we are planning, what we are doing. Because you cannot plant Kokoyam and get cassava. We are not doing right, the right thing. My final point on this is that, look, our league cannot continue to be run the way it's being run and hope to have players to play in the national team. Hmm. I'm being frank with you. Yeah. Hmm. I'm being frank with you. I talk about technical system, and I'm happy Nimli said it. One of the key issues we said was that if they develop a technical system conducive and convenient with Ghana, all our local clubs from the Premier League to Division Two are going to be going through the same system because the technical director of the FA will have to run courses for all the coaches in these leagues. In fact, go there themselves, attach himself to the teams for about two weeks. It will be in House of Folk. About two weeks, he will move to Kotoko. About two weeks, he will go to the Great Olympics, Liberty. And that's what he will be doing to make sure that the coaches of those teams are really doing what the technical director of the FA has mandated them to do. All right. Nimle is worried about me that's sitting at the FA day. What about if you are, you are Lepet or what's the name? Is yeah, it Lepet? Lepet? What about if, are you sure he's even listening to me? That? No. There you go. No. There you go, Honorable. That is the problem. We can't are, you go, are you sure he's even listening to me? That? We can't but find why should we, if we have Minta, If we have Minta, why should we go and bring Lepet? That is the issue. That is the issue. If we have Minta, what is in the head of Lepet that is not in the head of Minta? He's a <laughs> professor for Christ's sake. Of course. He knows how to do research. He knows how to, to, to be able to put a report together. He knows how to teach. So what is Lipet sitting there doing and taking our money, wasting our money? Hmm. Well, Lipet, since he came, what has been his in fact, his contribution? Input, he recommended a third division into player. The development of the game <laughs> at the local level. Has he even visited one coast coast football match? To watch one coast to see how we will even bring up, watch, see the pitches. Because the tanker director should be the one who should be able to say the things that Edem Ansa is talking about. Yeah. Our coast pitches are bad. Can we do something about infrastructure? Can we do the that's the work of the tanker director? He must make recommendations on the technical development of the game to the Ghana Football Association. He can't sit in that office and just be talking about blaster players. Who is playing where? Uh, who is, that is not his job. And I'm so happy when you put touch up. When I talk about the restructuring of our management committees, I'm happy Jerome has raised it. They are not necessary waste of money. And you know the problem I had with the former FA? Because people will influence players to ask for more bonuses because management committee members will also benefit from the bonus. Go 
more efficient and all those things that came up in the last football administration. <laughs> it's all because of it's, it's all because of management committee members. If we avoid those things, we will cut down on the expenditure on the national teams. And we'll be able to use that resources for the development of the game at the coast level, at the division three level, division two level, premier, uh, division one level, and uh, 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 even have something to do with the infrastructure development of the country. We're wasting too much resources on unnecessary associations, uh, organizations, and committees that do not really directly benefit us. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Neil and Tim Van Poy, uh, former Minister of Sports. Uh, currently member of parliament for the do, do, do you uh, he has wrapped up the conversation and thank you very much Jerome Moche and Franklin Kujo uh, for joining me on the first part of this week